All right. So Kevin O'Connor here back again with a quick personal project I've been working on, which entails a GitOps style demo that combines GitHub Actions and HashiCorp Vault for image building. Okay. So let's get into it. Let me pop open my screen here, show you guys a few things that we got cooking. Uh, so, you know, what is it that we're trying to do, right? So in this example, we're going to be building an image, actually, you know, leveraging some pipelining from GitHub as well, too, through GitHub Actions that you may or may not be familiar with, that essentially creates a new Docker image on every new code commit to our repository, right? Because in this example, we're storing our image configuration as code, and we're getting all the benefits out of a version control system so that our team can collaborate on the image configuration, right? And as folks make updates and commit to the repo, we want images to be built with those updates so that we can then test out the changes that we just made. And as you can see here on the screen, with this example, we're deploying a sample Ruby application. But to be honest, it doesn't really matter what the app is because the use case for this demo is more around secrets management for our images than an actual running application. But I'm sure we've all seen it before where we have secrets hard-coded into images or in our code. And obviously that's against the best practice, right? Our code should be for configuration. And then all of our sensitive values and passwords that our code needs to function should be locked away and abstracted from users kind of whenever possible, right? So we don't have the ability of human error or really just laziness leading to breach, right? We wanna store our secrets in a central location, encrypt them, monitor their usage, ideally rotate them, and in a best case scenario, dynamically generate them uh, on request, taking advantage of some of those just-in-time credentialing workflows as well, too. But back to our example, here's a high-level overview, right? With this, we have an application that's going to need a secret, right? And for simplicity's sake, you can just think of it like an application server that's going to need access to a database server, right? And when I say app, right, we're talking about the application image here that we're building. But for this example, you know, how would that app auth to a database? It's going to need a secret, right? And there's actually... You know, in our image today, there's a secret that's there right now, a static secret, let's say, uh, that was placed into, you know, a file in a working directory within the image. But obviously, as I just mentioned, it's against best practice to just have that hard coded within our image itself, right? And from a security pers perspective, it, you know, it'd be a, a lot better to leverage a tool like HashiCorp Vault to centralize all of our secrets. And then on the image build process, actually have GitHub reach out to Vault to get the secret and inject it or you know, insert it into the image right at build time, you know, compared to say having a secret hard coded into the image from day zero. And then you've got like, you know, long, long attack window, big attack surface. If someone was to find it, you know, you could be exploited and, and vulnerable and, and all of those bad things that we, we read about in the press, right? So essentially the way this is going to work is that, you know, every time we're committing to the repo, this build process is going to kick off. Uh, so we have a user committing, say, new code, making an update to the image. It's going to execute a build workflow that's carried out by a GitHub runner. And as part of that, we've defined some workflow actions, and that runner will uh, check out the code. It will then auth to Vault, retrieve the secret that we have stored in Vault, and insert that into the image as part of the build process as it's you know, then publishing it to the registry, right? It could be the Docker registry, could be the HashiCorp Cloud Platform registry, wherever it is that you're managing your images, right? So that's it at a high level. Uh, you know, how might we go about doing this, right? Well, as I mentioned, GitHub has something called Git GitHub Actions that makes pipelining like this a lot easier. So let me first kind of show a few things off the bat that I did in terms of initial setup and config, and then we can actually kick off the build process and see uh, see this in real time. So as I mentioned before, I do have uh, an image that's in my registry. It's living there and we have a secret in there today. So I'm just going to cat that out, right? That's in a file and a directory in our image. And we'll get the value of our secret, which is actually unset secret, please override, right? So that's the secret value that we have in our image today. And we're going to be grabbing a secret from Vault and replacing the value that's currently in our image, right? So we actually have an instance of Vault that's running. If we were to run a Vault uh, status, all right, we'll get a get a response there. I have a dev instance of Vault that's just running locally on uh, on my workstation, but obviously you could be using uh, a Vault Enterprise cluster, an HCP Vault cluster as well too, right? But if we go ahead and look, actually have the Vault UI that stood up here, 
right? And within this backend path, this secrets engine within Vault, this is at secrets uh, slash secrets slash CI, right? Because everything in Vault is path based. We have a key value pair of app secret, and then the actual secret value is secret provided by Vault, right? So this is what's going to be uh, replacing the value that's in our image uh, today, right? The unset secret, please override. And the way that we're going to do that is, again, through using GitHub Actions, right? So GitHub is going to check out the source code, reach out to Vault, get the secret, then build the image, right? But how does it actually go about doing that? And, and how can you set that up? Well, the way is through defining a workflow in uh, GitHub Actions, right? So let's take a look at our workflow here that we've defined. And this is something that you can define as YAML and have live within the repository itself. Right? And there's a few different things in here that I'll just kind of call out. So obviously we've got our name, we're calling this image builder. Uh, and we are going to run this on, this is basically saying, you know, when is this going to execute? We have this labeled as push, right? That just essentially means that every time something is pushed to the repo, it's going to trigger, right? So GitHub Actions runs in a bit of a client server way, right? Well, you, where you, you have a GitHub Actions runner that is, uh, in this case, monitoring this repo for pushes or commits. And when a push or commit happens, uh, the runner will pick up on that and execute the job that, that we've defined, right? So a few other things here. It says it runs on self-hosted. Um, obviously in an enterprise setting, you would probably have servers that are dedicated to, to executing your, your GitHub uh, runner jobs. But in my case, um, I'm again, just using my local workstation for demo purposes. So this is my own laptop here. And again, I have the GitHub runner that's actually just kind of out here waiting, right? So that's in this terminal down here. We can see, you know, I, I set up the authentication beforehand with GitHub. It, it's, it's fairly simple. They give you all the commands to run um, and you can do that beforehand. And it's, as it says, they're just listening for jobs, which is essentially the commit to the repo that it'll pick up on. Okay. Um, so back to the workflow, right? Uh, the actual steps involved, we can see that we are going to check out our code, right? And then we're gonna import our secrets from HashiCorp Vault. And I had to define, um, you know, that we're using a, uh, a HashiCorp Vault action, GitHub action, uh, and then kind of call out the uh, location or the address of my Vault instance, right? So it's just running on localhost again, as I've got a, a vault dev instance running. Uh, but you may be asking, how is the GitHub action runner going to uh, log in or authenticate to vault, right? Vault is locked down and, and secure. The way we did that was through creating a token in vault beforehand that we then passed to GitHub, right? So created the token, you go into the action secrets uh, section within GitHub, and you define a variable called vault token that you can then insert that token, right? So that's what the Git, that's what GitHub is going to use to auth to vault to grab the secret that it needs. And then our final step is centrally to just build build the Docker image, right? So we are gonna we're gonna go ahead and do that, right? And it's going to create the file named app secret within that working directory, which we'll be populating with the secret that we got from vault, right? So that is essentially it. So let's go ahead and kick this off. Um, we'll trigger a commit to the repo. So just for my terminal here, just gonna grab the command. I'm actually just gonna run an empty commit, right? So we're not actually making a, a change to the code, but just to um, kick off the workflow and we'll call this today's December 20th. Just put a little uh, tag on there. And when uh, once I execute this, we'll see we'll see some action down here. The job will actually kick, kick off down here. We'll take a look at our repo as well too. Um, we should see yeah, the last kind of commit was yesterday, so this will update as well too, um, and we'll get to see things kick off here. So let's go ahead and do that. And excuse me, that was just commit. Now we actually have to push. There we go. Okay, now this will kick off in a second. There we go. And we're running the build job. And if we take a look at our repo, right, if I'm just to refresh this real quick, we'll see, there we go. Triggering workflow or update December 20th, right? That commit just came through. 
Um, obviously there's no diff or anything because we didn't actually make any changes. But if I was to go back and take a look at our workflow run, we can see that that's kicked off as well too. So we've got a you know, whole uh, versioning history of all of our workflow runs. If we go into the actual workflow, we can see that we're executing that image builder.yaml that we defined before. Um, and the different steps within the build are listed here as well too. And if we go back, it should have successfully completed. Yeah, so there we go. So the job build completed. We could step through these if we wanted to, you know, check out the, check out our code, import our secrets, build the image, you know, yada, 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 goes through uh, and does what it needs to do. So great, right? Seems like it was successful. Um, how can we sort of tie things off and maybe, you know, look back at our secret again. Let's go ahead and take, we'll run that same command we did before just to cat out the name of uh, the file. And if you're following along, it should uh, give us secret provided by vault. And there we have it, right? Secret provided by Vault. So that's it. Just kind of a short little tutorial. Uh, wanted to showcase how you can leverage GitHub, uh, GitHub Actions uh, to trigger image builds based on commits, taking a GitHub style approach uh, to image building, right? But leveraging Vault as that intermediary there to inject secrets as part of the build workflow, right? Therefore, kind of providing you with a centralization point for all of your secrets management and keeping secrets out of code, you know, and lessening the responsibility on developers by, you know, having these secrets automatically inserted into the build process at build time. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Otherwise, have a great day. Okay, thanks. Take care.